Hello, Lord. Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. We greet everyone in the peace of the Lord Jesus. In reverence to reading the word of the Lord, I would like to invite those who can to to stand up in Jeremiah. Jer Jeremiah in the Old Testament, chapter 29. Jeremiah 29, verse 10 and 11. Verse 10 and 11. In the Old Testament, <coughs> very close to Isaiah. Twenty-nine, verse ten and eleven. The word of the Lord says the following: For thus says the Lord, after seventy years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work word toward you and calls you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future that and a hope. Blessed be the Lord. Uh, we need fellowship with your Holy Spirit we seek your sweet presence in this place. We ask that through your word you may once again bless us. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. <coughs> Those verses that we have just finished reading, they speak uh, of a moment in which the prophet Jeremiah he writes a letter and this letter contained uh, their instructions from the Lord, a word from God to his, uh, to all his people. The people of God was living a prophetic moment. The people of God had been transported to Babylon by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. And there, they were going to st stay for a period of 70 years in order for the word of the Lord to be fulfilled. And the fulfillment of the word of the Lord was the rescue of his people, the return of his people to the land of promise, to the land where uh, flows honey milk to the promise that he had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all his descendants. And in Jeremiah, he writes down this letter receiving the instructions from the Lord. And since he was not able to stay, to be present, so then he sends the letter by the hands of two men, two people. And all of it in the Bible, everything in the Bible has a meaning, has a prophetic representation. And when we speak about two, the church, the church knows very well this number, which is linked to fellowship. Bread and, and wine, body and blood, yeah, so it speaks of fellowship. So we walk in the light in the same way he is in the light. We have fellowship. So when man walks in the light, he man is in fellowship with God. He Man is in agreement with the plan, with the project that God has for that person's life. So Jeremiah here is the, uh, a symbol of the Lord that receives instructions from the Father and sends 
them to his church, to his chosen. There's a song that says the following. I sent a letter, I sent a letter to God. But here it's not a letter that was sent from man to God. But this is a letter that was sent from God to man. To his people. To his church. In the name of the first individual is called Elaza. And the meaning of this name is God has done. Sometimes we, we sing a song and say, God will do. God has already done. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And God, when God makes man, He says, God has finished the entire work of creation. So then God has already made, done it. My brother and sister, God has already done it. All things that were necessary for your life here and your life in eternity. Everything on heaven is already prepared. And this name has a meaning. God has done. So it speaks of the beginning. It speaks of a moment of creation. It speaks of the Creator. It speaks of the one who is the Alpha. It speaks of the one who that all things were, were made. All things were made by Him. And without Him, Nothing that was made was made. And in him there was life, and the life was the light of man. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world, or the light of man. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. So it's speaking of the Lord, the Alpha, the Creator. The one who has done all things for you and I, for each man. The second individual here is called Jemarias. Jemarias, the meaning of that name is the Lord has is been doing, is fulfilling. And to you, my brother and sister, what God has fulfilling? He, God is fulfilling His word, every promise. Song 5,500. Every word that the Lord has done has already been fulfilled. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Why? Because it was already determined by the Lord. So the first, God has made. The second, God, the Lord is fulfilling. God is fulfilling His word. Whatever God has said, my brother and sister, is already been determined by Him in His eternity. So we can see here the, the presence of Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And Jeremiah says, Jeremiah says, the Lord is fulfilling has been fulfilling, and fulfilling speaks of promise. God is fulfilling with His word and with His promise. And it's written that, that this is the promise that He has given us. This is the promise that He has made for us, eternal life. So when Jesus made a promise that he would be with us all the way to the end, the sign would follow the, all of those who, who believed in him. And he said that, may a mountain fall and valleys, but your promise remains standing. He has not changed because powerful is our Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And he sent this letter to the church. 
He sent this letter to his people. He sent this letter to his chosen to say to the people, to say to his church, to say to the children of Israel that he never forgot. My brother and sister, God has never forgotten about you. And that, that word, that letter, was a confirmation of the plan and project of God to the life of each person who was here. Where was the people? They were in Babylon. Babylon is a symbol of the world, typifies the world. But the people was in Babylon, but they didn't belong to Babylon. The church is in the world, but the church does not belong to the world. I am not, do not belong to the world. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So then the Lord says, speaks with his servants, edify houses. That's interesting, isn't it? Edify a house. What is edify? Edify is building. Edify the house for to your dwelling, a place for your eternal inhabitants. Edify a house. The advice of the Lord for your life today is that edify a house. Build your li spiritual life the base on the promise that God has made for your life. Edify and inhabit that house. So, on the words, establish the project of God in your life and live, is, live in this project. Accept the word and leave the word of God. Edify the house. Inhabit in it. Uh, plant a garden. Interesting, a garden. What else do we see in a garden? Flowers. The flowers are types, the type of the spiritual gift. So a house needs to be edified and it has to have a garden. It has to have the presence of the Holy Spirit. Then I give knowledge gift of curing wonders. All the others with knowledge, wonders, uh, discernment, prophecies, f f uh, tongues, interpretation. So in other words, it's a house where the Holy Spirit of God is present. The house edified on the rock remains forever. And who is the rock? The Lord, our Lord and Savior. I already said that Jesus is the beginning and the end. He's the light. And now He's the rock. Where our spiritual life needs to be edified on. And He speaks about edifying, plant, sowing a garden and eat fruit. Oh, a garden that, has, that produces fruits. When you plant a garden, and you eat the fruit. And what are the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Oh, they're here. Love. Uh, uh, even if I spoke the language of the angels, if I didn't have love. This is the first thing, love. Love, God, above all things. The second command, command, commandment of Jesus is this, that you love your neighbor like yourself. So then we have two. The fellowship with the Father. Love. Peace. Goodness. Charity. Faithfulness. Being uh, self-control. Did I forget anything? Peace, love, being, being late to anger, uh, being calm, 
self-control, and I forgot one. Faith. faith. Amen. Without faith, well, don't let it be lacking. I, it was lacking here in my mind, but it cannot be lacking in your heart. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. So edify your house, inhabit, plant, and eat of its fruit. And then later Jesus speaks of uh, a house. That, uh, Jesus speaks about marriage. Take up a women and generate sons and daughters. Take, take up women for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may have sons and daughters and that they multiply and your number does not grow s smaller. So it speaks of, uh, about marriage, it speaks of uh, covenant and alliance and covenant with, between God and man. The bride is the church and the groom is Jesus. And this is this project, this marriage, at any moment, in the twinkling of an eye, will happen, will become real. It's the marriage between the church and Jesus and the rapture of the church. And it says the following. 70 years. He speaks of a time. The time for the fulfillment of his prophecy. The fulfillment so that the people may go back to their home, go back to their land. When we read the book of Revelations, the church knows this time. is the sounding of the trumpets, proclaiming the arrival of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this time is coming close. It's coming near. Like the, the, the song book says, the Lord Jesus is coming. He will return. It is speak of this prophetic moment that Israel is leaving and that also the church is leaving. So he said the following. There will be, it will pass 70 years and then now we'll visit you. What, what is the meaning of visiting? Visiting is going towards towards something. Visiting and as a meaning in the dictionary says is to run in one of the description of uh, visiting. It speaks of the time called soon. The time that is coming near. A time that is counting to the moment of this visitation in which the Lord will go towards us. As a groom goes uh, the groom goes f to his chamber and the bride also goes to meet the groom and that's how it's going to happen in the prophetic moment and that Jesus is coming the moment in which the church will be visited or will go to meet the Lord this is a moment of preparation for Israel a moment in which Israel need to be paying attention to that moment because at any moment the project of God was going to be fulfilled in their midst and this promise of the Lord for our lives because at any moment this project this arrival of the Lord will take place in our midst so then he writes a letter to alert to inform to await the people to the moment of his visitation it was the moment when where he was going to go towards this meeting, the moment in which the Lord was going to be present in their midst, that person is going to visit me, so he's coming to my house, he's coming towards me, and Jesus is coming towards us. Then I'll visit you, and I will fulfill upon you my good word. So he said that he's going to visit and fulfill upon you, above us. He'll pour out upon each one of us the fulfillment of his word, the fulfillment of his prophecy. But it's not, it's not 
a simple word, but it's a good word. And what is a good word that you can receive tonight, that I, I can receive tonight? It's a word that Jesus saved your life. It's a word that Jesus is coming to take you, my brother and sister, your family. This is a good word. It's a word of salvation that comes from the mouth of the Lord. It's a word that He has prepared for you, my brother and sister, a new heaven, a new earth, a new eternity. That's a good word. This is the good proclamation. It's a good event that is about to take place in our midst. So He's saying, turning you, causing you to come to that place. Jeremiah had stayed in Jerusalem and the people was in Babylon. And now the Lord was saying, you're going to turn back to this place. My brothers and sisters, all of us, we didn't leave our land. We left the presence of God. We left heaven. We left eternity. And the Bible says that the dust is going to back to dust, and the soul is going to ba going back to God. That's why it says, "I will turn it back," because you and I, we left eternity of God, of the house of the Lord, and desire the Lord is that we go back to that place, and all the project of God, and all creation of God, was. was going to uh, create it to pr promote our return to God. So I'll, I'll bring you back to this place because I thought that, thought the thought about you. So what God has been thinking about um, for me? What is the project that God has for my life? What is, what is God planning for my life? I believe that many people may have thought that. What, what is the, the plan of God for my life? The Bible says that the thoughts of God are greater than ours. There's a text that said that the, what the eye hasn't seen, the ear has not heard, has not come to the heart of man, are the things that are prepared, the Lord has prepared for those who love Him. So the Word of God are for those who love God to those who have been called to His decree, to those who, who have their name written in the Book of, of Life, to those that will inherit the eternal land, the eternity of God. And the thought of God is the best possible for you and for me, my brother and sister, because the thought of, the, of God is to take us to His home, to His eternity. And he says the following, thoughts of peace. Sometimes people have thoughts regarding my and your life, and those thoughts are not thoughts of peace. They are not good thoughts. Sometimes the thoughts of the person of the enemy is kill, destroy, and steal, bring anguish and bring sadness. Isn't it true? But the thoughts of God, no, they're, they're good, they're peace. I'll give you my peace. Uh, my peace I give you, I don't give you like the world gives, because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And this is the word from the Lord to you, my brother and sister. You're going to leave this place in peace, because the peace of the Lord is what I greet every one of the peace of the Lord. This is our greeting every day. Because you're going to take this peace to your home, to your uh, environment of work. And you and the people that are next to you will receive the blessing and they'll feel this presence and this peace from the Lord. To give you the end that you're expecting. The Lord is speaking of an end. In English, it's end. And, right, the English is, in English is end. The end. It's finished. It's over. 
So the Lord is speaking about the time of the end. And the disciples of Jesus, they ask, how about the end? When all these things happen, my brother, we are living the fulfillment of all the things that the Lord has spoken. The only thing that is left is this, uh, uh, is of Him coming towards us. And at any moment, my brother and sister, in a twinkle of an eye, this project will be fulfilled in our midst. And then, it will be the end. It will be, it will be finished, the project of God. And the desire of the Lord is that you may receive this end <laughs> that you are waiting for. The end of being in the holy land, of having your soul saved. The end of knowing that you accepted Jesus in your life and now you have a place in heaven, a place in eternity. This is the end that the Lord has for each one of us. The end of peace, an ending without crying or anguish, or without pain, without suffering, because God will dry up our tears, will dry up every tear. The Lord has shown a spiritual gift. And I remember here of a person that was offered a wall. This wall was to dry up the tears of a person that is suffering, because when you are crying, it's because the situation is not good. The person wants, wanted to reject this wall that was given to that person. My sister, the the wall is from the Lamb. The wall is from the Lamb. You understand? The wall is from the Lamb. He is the Lamb of God. It's Jesus that has dried up from your eyes all tears. This is Jesus that you not want to cease the pain on of your heart. You want to take away all your suffering and bring joy to your life. Because salvation is feeling a great joy. And, and I, I want you to live this place feeling this joy, a joy that the world doesn't know, that Babylon doesn't know. But those who are in the presence of the Lord know this joy, which is the joy of salvation in Christ Jesus. This is the good word the Lord has for you tonight, especially to you, my sister. Allow the Lord dry up your tears. Let Jesus bring comfort to you. Let Jesus help you. Let Jesus save your life. Let Jesus take from your heart any bitterness, every sadness, every pain, because He loves you. And that's why we're here tonight, to hear this message from the Lord to your life. Amen. Let us sing a song.
Glory to God. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I invite the brethren to stand up once again. You know, going to this night, going to do something prophetic, biblical, which is the introduction of a child. For us as a church, it's something that is a great blessing. See our children being raised on the path of the Lord, having our children being preserved by the Lord, seeing our children receiving from the part of the Lord every instruction. That's what they learn in our Sunday schools. The teachers, they, they teach them with a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, a lot of seeking of the Lord. And the Lord, with grace, has given to them all the means to give to our children an inheritance, an inheritance that will make us make our children allow us to 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 be the with the lord an inheritance that never extinguishes that never wears out this is the greatest inheritance which is the salvation jesus that's why i like to read a text in the bible firstly i'm gonna wanna call our sister renata duarte and our brother Gilbert and our little daughter livia duarte that are and also our little sister Sophia, sister of Livia, and the grandmother Larisse Vasconcelos, <coughs> who's here tonight, and also Tia Raquel Vasconcelos, that, uh, the aunt uh, Vasconcelos, who's here also with us. Great joy. The text of the word that is located in Luke. Luke 2. when Jesus is introduced. The word the Lord teaches to introduce our children for the care of the Lord. And when they grow up and they have an understanding regarding this project of salvation Jesus, so then they will baptize in the water. So at first, the Lord is teaching us to leave it um, under the care of the Lord. There's no one that can take a better care of what we have than our Lord. So the text says the following. And it came to pass in those days that a uh, decree went out from... So it was given to Jesus. It went just... So as the days were fulfilled, and the, the purification of and the days of Moses, they brought Jerusalem to introduce him to the Lord, to present him to the Lord. According to what is written in the law of the Lord, they will, every male should be consecrated to the Lord. To, according to the law of the Lord, they should make a sacrifice of a dove. So it is a teaching from the part of the Lord. The children, they were placed. That's what we are doing here. That's what the brothers, Renate and Gilberto, they are trusting the Lord so that the Lord may from this day forward, like it was in the period of gestation and, and as it's been to this day, so that the Lord may be a provider. And we as a church, we also have a commitment with the Lord. In prayer, we need to help in the growth, in the raising of, of their daughter. Our role as a church is to pray so that the Lord may give the parents all the authority, all the teaching, all the freedom to conduct these two wonderful kids in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Oh. <coughs> mm. 
what a weird thing. <laughs> and she's sleeping like an angel. Oh, she's sucking a pacifier. I used to suck on a pacifier until I was 11 years old. Don't tell anyone. Amen. Let's pray to the Lord. Let's pray with the laying of hands. Glory to Jesus. Lord Father, we plead to you by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. Bless a blessing to your daughter so that you may protect her in your presence and that you may conduct her in your paths, teaching her to love you and to follow you and so that she may be protected and preserved in your presence as that you may send your angels, Lord, to be with her, ministering the acts of justice of the Lord in her behalf. Bless the parents, the mother, the family, Lord, and that they may be a blessing in your presence. The prayer that we say, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. And that's it. See? <laughs> oh. At the right time. She doesn't want to leave. <laughs> I think she wants. Amen. This weird man. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Thank you. Amen. A bread. The Lord has given a couple of spiritual gifts. And those spiritual gifts, just now as we bring the service to a close, the Lord has shown that tonight the Lord has brought here a woman. And this woman, she had a situation in her home with her family that has brought a, a brought a great trial to her life. And it's interesting that this situation, the Lord wants her to forgive. Because when she, she does that, the Lord will give her a deliverance. This weight, this pain, this anguish, this bitterness that she has in her heart, inside of her uh, environment of her family will be removed. And truly, that's what it is. A relationship with God always works out. You know why? Because of forgiveness. The relationship between man and God will only move forward because God knows how to forgive. We sin, we sin, sin, makes mistakes, deny the Lord but when you confess to him and we plead for the power of the blood of Jesus, he forgives us and forgets. And then we begin a new phase. So that's what the Lord is teaching us here. The, do as the Lord does. Have the mind of Christ. Be a, a true servant of the Lord and learn how to forgive. No, no, nobody's perfect. And you see how the relationship, the environment in your home, the life in your family. You see how God will honor you. The one who's uh, humbled will be exalted. Maybe you may, may be right, but today you are a new creature in God. You carry in, in yourself the marks of Christ in Jesus. Always forgive us. And the Lord, the Lord also, also has shown uh, spoken about another person that who entered here, another woman, that she sees in the church the difference that we as a church, we have the light of Christ, the revelation. It's not that we are the best. No, much on the contrary, we're the worst. That's why we need the Lord. If we were the best, maybe we would not be here. We are here because we are needy. We need uh, the great love of God. And 
we, you can be part of this people, this spiritual family, this nation elected and chosen by God. You can do it tonight. You can, can open up your heart and you see how God has many amazing experiences, positive experiences, experiences that can change your life forever. Open up your heart and come back. Come back to Jerusalem. Come back to your place of origin. The Lord is called by God to be to live in the presence of God and the Lord is calling you and is expecting you to open up your heart and walk into His presence. Amen. Glory to God.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is your name, Lord. Glory to God. Lord God, want to praise your name, Lord. Because it is with joy that we came up to your house. Is with heart filled with joy that we say that we love you. And that we want to always stay in your presence. That's why tonight we are here, Lord, to offer you our gratitude for all your deeds, the deliverances, the miracles, the blessings received, Lord, for you, for you being our great I am. Receive our service and give us a great week in your presence, a weekend where once again we can, by faith, might be able by faith to see your glory. To see, Lord, your hands lay upon each one of us and that the difficulties and the barriers, the obstacles may all be overcome, Lord. And that we may come to the end of this week with the flag of victory in our hands. Take us home in peace. Is a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated. We are going to begin the period, period of assistance. If you have identified with any part of the service, whether it is the praise, the message, the, the spiritual gifts, we want to pray for you. The pastors, the deacons and ushers, we are here at your disposal. Just raise your hand and we are going to go towards where you were seated. And amen. The church remain praying for 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 the negotiations regarding the new property and the and the, the Lord may open up the doors and tomorrow we begin our uh, early dawn with the neighbors we have our early dawn service every Saturday but the the remaining days of the week you can you can you can uh, pray at home have early dawn at home but we are uh, going to enter in this rhythm because the Lord has great th things to do for us. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone. And tomorrow, uh, meeting with the men at 8 o'clock in, here in Pampano.